All right, so we're continuing to work on the factoring of higher degree polynomials using quadratic strategies. So what I mean is you're, you're given a polynomial, something like this, x plus 6, x to the 1 half, plus 8. And here, I guess we were talking about a polynomial with a degree less than 2. But essentially, it's the same idea. Because with a higher or lower degree, we want to rewrite this in a way so we can use a quadratic strategy. And a quadratic, oops, a quadratic strategy, all I mean by that is we want to rewrite it in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c, and then use that to factor in pairs like we do for quadratics. That's our goal. So how do we do that? Well, the key is to notice that in all quadratics, we have a variable and then that same variable squared here. And when you look at something, you want to see if you're able to create that. So what is it, our variable? What's x to the 1 half? And what's x to the 1 half squared? Well, that just equals x to the 1 half times x to the 1 half, or you can think of that as the square root of x times the square root of x, and that equals x, right? It's the square root squared. So this variable does equal this one squared. So let's write it in a format that looks like the quadratic formula, uh, the quadratic polynomial up here. So I'm going to write x to the 1 half squared. That's x. We just showed that right here plus 6 to that same, times that same variable, plus 8. And now we have something that doesn't look very friendly, but can be thought of as a quadratic. And if you're not convinced, do this. Say that x to the 1 half is your variable. Call it something like v. And then if you rewrite your this with that variable, you'll see it. v squared, right, because instead of x to the 1 half squared, we have a v squared, plus 6 times v, Remember, v is x to the 1 half, plus 8. And you can see that's a quadratic. But I, I don't like to use this strategy because then you have to re-plug in the original value at the end. But you might like that. And if you do, use it. I'm going to stick with this here and just factor it out. So we're going to factor in pairs. What do I need? Well, x to the 1 half is being squared. So we need x to the 1 half and then another x to the 1 half. So that when we multiply, we square them. Now I need factors of 8 that add up to top positive 6. I know that 4 times 2 equals 8, and 4 plus 2 is 6, so that works nicely. So what do I do? Well, I just put those factors in, a positive 4 and a positive 2, and I'm done. And if we're, we're convinced that we're, we're not there, right, uh, if, we're, if we're feeling like we can't go any further, or if we're feeling like we're off base, I should say, check. So x to the 1 half times x to the 1 half, we show that up here, that's x. x to the 1 half times 4 is, well, 4x to the 1 half. 2 times x to the 1 half is 2x to the 1 half, and then 2 times 4 is 8. Simplify this, here we get 6x to the 1 half, so now we have x plus 6x to the 1 half plus 8. And this is the same as our original quadratic up here. So all this messiness over here, we factored it out correctly. Let's look at one more in this video. Okay, what if we have something like 4x to the 4th minus 36? Well, the trick here, right, we're missing the bx term. ax squared plus bx plus c. Where'd it go? We just have the ax squared and the c term here. I wrote this wrong. I should say ax squared. Uh, and usually, I guess a hint for that is that it has something to do with um, the difference of squares. Typically, that's what they'll do. If they just give you the first and last term, you can assume it has something to do with the difference of squares. What's that mean? Well, remember, if you have x minus a right, times x plus a, this represents the difference of two squares. This equals x squared, right, because x times x is x squared, times x plus a times minus x and, and a is zero, times minus a times plus a is minus a squared. Difference of two squares, one number squared minus another can be factored out simply like this. So if you're missing the bx term, look for that for help. 
and I, I want to do the same thing here, except I have the fourth power. So what do I do? Well, 36, that's 6 squared, so we have one of our squares. Can this be represented as a square? Yes. What is 2x, right, squared, squared? Well, that is 4x squared. Why? Because, well, this squared, this exponent applies to both the coefficient and the variable. So this means take 2 and square it. That gives you 4. Take x squared and square that. Let's go that quickly. x squared times x squared. That means x squared squared. This x is x times x, and so is this one. Multiply them all out, we have 4x's, or x to the 4th power. So this balances out, right? x squared squared is x to the 4th, and 2 squared is 4. So now we have the difference of 2 squares. Let's apply our formula. So our x term is this whole thing right here. And we want to do x minus a. So 2x squared minus a, well, a squared is 6 squared here, so 6 is our a term, so minus 6, and then 2x squared plus 6, right, because we want to add the x and the a. And then we're done. We've factored this out. So look for those difference of squares, especially they'll, they'll give you this often with higher degrees. Just rewrite it as a square. All right, hope that helped.